the spy television the spy uganda we are back with the spy weekly roundup my name is Kob Singe monika and we are going to be taking you through the things that have made news throughout the week uh, before we start i want us to go through a debate uganda's coffee industry something that has been a topic throughout the media the country and the parliament as well uganda coffee industry under the national coffee amendment bill and the dissolution of uganda coffee development authority mr andrew romba you're welcome to the show Thank what you. do you have to say about uganda national coffee uganda amendment coffee bill. Development authority mm. uh, and its the amendment dissolution. Bill, yes um i think first of all there has been uh, a whole about, about the issue, the, 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 the dissolution of the authority. Whereas the very MPs were actually against a bloated uh, government, cabinet and so on. When it came to the coffee sector, they now actually disagree with the president that he should not merge the, the, uh, the Uganda coffee development yeah, into the, the mother ministry. On the other side, they were saying Museveni is actually having a bloated government. All other sectors, they agreed that they should be uh, taken back to their mother ministry. When it came to coffee, now it came out that it, it now became a Uganda issue. Just like you'd see a Nkoba Zambogo issue. So they have Ugandanized coffee. Yet coffee is a national crop. Coffee is grown in Toro, coffee is grown in, 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 um, in eastern Uganda, Mbali and others. Coffee is grown in Mbarara, coffee is grown in Kabali. It is actually not true that it is Anite, the speaker, who Ugandanized the issue. By the time Anite was talking, was talking about let those, let, let, let those of Uganda not have the day, they had already actually turned it into a Uganda issue. Because they started mobilizing around the Uganda caucus. Mm. That's what they were doing. So Anite was actually saying we must disband this Uganda caucus so that it becomes a national issue. Mm. But as you know, um, the politics of Uganda now, people always find something that they can rotate around and then they blow it out of context. But if you were the speaker and you tried to understand what the Uganda of Uganda was mobilizing around. It had become a Uganda issue. That's why you realize also the Katikiro of Uganda, not, not the king of Songora, <laughs> not, the, not the, the, the king of Toro, not the Omukam of Unyoro, uh -uh. it is the Katikiro of Uganda coming out also to give his opinion. Mm, to why, why, has, why has the Katikiro of Uganda been silent on other on other margins, mm. not only this one is when it comes out. Mm. The Uganda, they are saying they are the majority growers of, of coffee. So they are the dominance of the coffee industry. That's their main point. That, that, is, that is not true. A Terimba, before that slogan came in Uganda, people of Mbari were actually growing more coffee mm. than in Uganda. All all children of, of Uganda that, who are now old in the parliament and so on, most of them were educated on coffee. Most of the people, the, old, the, the, the older people, their main income at that time was coffee. So it means Emwani Terimba has simply come to, to, uh, to, to uh, I think, reinvigorate the, 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 the coffee industry, add in more energy, encourage more people, but it is not true that this is the headquarter of coffee growing. Mm. It, 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 is, it is debatable. But for me, my argument is, they have been, they have, the, the entire last, of last week, they have been accusing Speaker Anite of being tribal because of what she allegedly said. And I'm saying allegedly because we don't have evidence that she said those words. Because I have seen the, the the press statement from Chris Obori saying it, they used the AI, artificial intelligence, to add some. So it means it becomes a debate. But let me use the word allegedly. Speaker Nite, remember, by the time she came to chair the, the, the floor, the parliament, 
there had been prior um, mobilization by the one the honorable Mwanga Chivumbi mm. who had been tasked to mobilize the Buganda caucus not not the parliament of Uganda the Buganda caucus mm. so is it Anita who sent him to go and mobilize the Buganda caucus not the MPs of Uganda but Buganda caucus so now who was the first to Ugandanize the issue who was the first to tribalize the issue is it Anita no it is not so Anita comes to address a matter that she sees it is already being tribalized and that's why she says allegedly that please make sure those people that group of people do not take us astray from the main argument of the coffee mm. so to crown it all for me i think it is not it is not per se it is not an issue if we want to treat this issue of tribalism, let us begin with who turned this coffee issue into a Buganda caucus issue. So that Anita comes to react to that. That's where the debate should go. Mm. Uh, then number two, I have seen also the statement by President Museveni. <coughs> Museveni showing them that ah, you cannot teach me the coffee economy. I was actually the very one who marketed this from point A to point B. I think he was referring to there is a place he talked about. Now, if the opposition has been saying Museven and his government have failed completely in every sector, it is at this point that they, <laughs> they now agree with him that ah, at this coffee, coffee has done what? Has been doing well. Under whose leadership? Museven. Is. Under Museven. So they actually agree with Museveni that he has done some good work on that one. That's why they say, we have been now getting money from this and that, but you have been saying Museveni has failed completely. Mm -hmm. It means you have been earning indirectly, silently. Now, he has touched there, you are saying, ah, don't touch us, we have been earning. Mm -hmm. We have been earning. But you have been saying Museveni has killed the coffee sector. You have been saying Museveni has killed everything. <laughs> now you are saying, we have been earning, please don't touch. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. You have been saying he has been killing every sector. How come you are saying now coffee is a good thing and you have been earning from it? Mm. To the extent of even bragging that uh, you are the biggest, uh, you know, earners and, and farmers of coffee. It means you have been getting money. You see, what they are, they are trying to show Museveni is that they understand it better than, than him. But him. remember, it is him who put up that sector. It is him who removed the Uganda Coffee Development Authority from the mother ministry, Maif, and gave it a, a, a semi-autonomy status. Uganda Coffee Development Authority. Yes. Now, it is him and his government taking it back. That's number one. Number two, I don't know who has sold an idea to the Uganda caucus that uh, when UCDA goes back to the ministry, the mother ministry of life, that they are going to dissolve and disband the team. Mm, to, to cut you short from there. Actually, one of the other issues that Uganda has raised is that uh, if they merge with the Minister of Agriculture and, and Fisheries, this might compromise the quality of coffee and maybe have a negative impact on the coffee industry. That is a fear factor. It is something that you can think about. They have not looked into how Museven is going to handle that unit in the Maif. Because Museven has not told you that whoever has been doing a very good job in, in, in the Uganda Coffee Development Authority, once it is merged back to the mother ministry, you should leave. He has not said that. The, 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 the executive director may remain the head of the unit. All the field work team may it remain because you are simply shifting your, your operations office back to the main supervisor which is your mother ministry i have not heard the president and his cabinet suggesting that once they come back we should disband abcd they are simply going, saying if you have been operating from here shift here go back to your mother ministry then report to the to, to the 
to the political head. But you are the technical person, the ED is the technical man, his networks on ground, uh, all the paperwork they have been saying that uh, getting certificate globally, what, what, they have not said that they're going to disband them. There was a fear some time back, I don't know what happened, I have forgotten what happened, maybe you can remind me, but they were saying uh, the coffee, Ugandan coffee, is going to lose the international market. Something had happened, which you need to remind me. Actually, I think Uganda withdrew from uh, the International Coffee Organization. Uganda withdrew. I saw the Katikiro of Uganda, Peter Maiga, and the Uganda. The whole argument was now that Uganda has withdrawn from the international coffee market, the, the coffee is going to die. You know that you remember that debate. Now, the current debate is that actually the market had gone up. Even the price had gone up. That is the current. Although they are showing it indirectly, they are revealing these secrets indirectly. But it shows from the time Uganda withdrew from that international coffee market, the Ugandan coffee market has increased in terms of value and price. So the same fear factor they have now mm -hmm. is that once it goes to the mother ministry, that we are going to lose the international market. But who says that when you go back to your mother ministry, when you go back home to your home, you are going to lose your value? Who said it? <laughs> who said it? That once you go back to your home, you are going to lose value? Uh, um, Mr. Irumba, the other issue I've had was uh, Minister of Agriculture has filed to handle other agencies like NADS, mm. Plan Modernization of Agriculture. What is it going to do now that Uganda Coffee Development Authority has not done in the coffee sector? What, 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 what did you ask? Minister of Agriculture has failed to manage other agencies like NADS and Plan Modernization of Agriculture. What is it going to do in the coffee industry that Uganda Coffee Development Authority has not By the way, done? to remind you, it is not true that that Uganda Coffee Development Authority has been has been uh, completely, you know, separate from from Maif. Maif has been a supervisor of this UCDA. Hmm. They've been writing reports. They've been reporting to them. Even when government is going to support the technical head, Maif, the minister, must be involved. So it is not true that they've been working completely. Uh, 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 independent from the Maif. No. So even the positives you have seen in, 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 uh, in UCDA and NADS, NADS has not completely failed. Only that I think Ugandans sometimes we don't take time to comprehend things. To comprehend things. Mm -hmm. And especially the big talkers in Kampala, uh, they know, they know from, from that side, they know up to Sega. <laughs> from this side, they know up to Mukono. From the other side, they know up to uh, they know up to I think Gayaza. The, the, when you look at the people who talk a lot about agriculture, they are not farmers. They are not farmers. They have not travelled Uganda. I have travelled this Uganda and Anadis. I have I have moved. I have visited farmers, real farmers, not these talkers in Uganda. These MPs who just have like. Most of the time he's in Kampala making poko poko, then he has some two, three farmers in the ground. He has some 100 uh, stems of coffee and he says, I'm a farmer. <laughs> they are real farmers. When you go to Kamwenge district, you find square miles of Hassi Avocado. You find square miles when you go to Toro of tea. Those are farmers. When you go to Mbali, leave Kampala, go to Mbali, see real coffee. He was in Mbali, see real, see real farmers. Those ones, you have not even heard them talking about this. They have not. It is the politicians. And if a politician has 10 stems of coffee, I'm a farmer, I'm a farmer, when? <laughs> so, I don't believe that, uh, that uh, my has failed on nerds and so on, no. But it depends on how much you have invested in research when it comes to agriculture. Because most people speak from Kampala. Yet agriculture is not happening in Kampala. The other, actually, the organization I was telling you about is Uganda, is, is International Coffee Organization. 
and international coffee agreement uganda withdrew from them mm. this was was i think 2022 this is 2024 two years ago from 2022 to today the ugandan coffee has simply gone up yeah the producer has reminded me thank you very much uganda withdrew so what's the whole about you know, UCDA going back to the mother industry, I don't see a problem. The problem I see with the Uganda and the Uganda is every time there is an issue, they try to make it a Nkobazambogo issue. Mm. They Ugandanize every matter. Why do you have this inferior complex that every time some law is being made, it is targeting you? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why is it targeting you? How many tribes are we in Uganda? Why do you think, how many people grow coffee in Uganda and they are not in Uganda? Quite many. When we are discussing, do you hear anybody tribalizing that matter? Uh -uh. Now, if you want to tribalize the coffee, why haven't the Banyankole tribalized the issue of, of, of the, the, the National Diary Corporation? Why? It has been taken to the Mother Ministry, isn't it? Yeah. Have you heard the Banyankole complaining? No. If they are complaining, they are complaining on legitimate issues. But saying we banyankole, have you heard it? No. No. So why do you Uganda, you know, tribal is everything? Coffee, coffee is not a Uganda issue. Mm. No. It's a national crop. All of us grew up on coffee. In Uganda, in Uganda, the biggest producers of milk is not Uganda. It is it is Ankole and generally Western Uganda. That the, 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 the sector has been taken back to the mother ministry. Have you heard the Banyankole and the Batoro and the Bachiga complaining or tribalizing that matter? They also have issues, don't you think they have? Mm, they, they have. Have, have you heard them tribalizing the matter? Mm. Now, Baganda, when they bring the coffee issue, because there is this Emanyeterimba uh, issue, you, have, you pretend like you have taken it, it is now yours. Now, when they try to do something around it, you think they are targeting you. And, that it, 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 and it, it is even obvious that, that the, the Katikir of Uganda has not come out openly to talk about any other sector that has been taken back to their mother ministry. It is only when they touched coffee. coffee. Now, you are the one showing us signs of tribalism. <laughs> now, when I need to tell the, uh, the other people that, please make sure that group of people Allegedly said, do not get the numbers to do this, you accuse her. But Anita is responding to an issue that you yourselves have been raising. Raising. Mm. That's how you have described yourselves. When is the Buganda caucus? Please make sure this doesn't go through. Now you have already Bugandanized the issue. So when I'm dealing with you, what do I say? Do I say at all? No. It is Buganda. <laughs> so am I wrong? Well, Is Mr. she wrong? Mr. Andrew, uh, what could be the expected benefits of this merger? First of all, I have told you from the beginning that uh, they have been accusing Museven of having multiplicity of different organizations doing the same thing. So now they are trying to synergize. You are, you are doing something to do with agriculture. Go back to agriculture. Report to the head of agriculture, Maif, the minister, like that, the structure goes like that. You are in medical, you have been doing things that the whole Ministry of, of Health is supposed to be handling. Go back and put your expertise in the ministry, come out as one. These departments and, and, and units are going to remain there, but under one house. One house. First, it reduces the expenses. Like you have seen UNRWA. You know, it has been doing a very good job, hmm? but it has been taken back to the Ministry of Works. Yeah, I agree. That does not mean that Kagina is going. No. Kagina and her team will remain doing their work. If the appointing authority deems so, they will remain doing their work. But now, this time, more closely supervised by the Minister. He has been supervising them, but at a, at a distance. Now you'll be sitting in the same, uh, in the same house, in the same building. So reports will be moving from point A to point B here. You know, movements, tracking of works. Workers, workers for UNRWA, workers for the Ministry of Works. Now they're able to say we need to have 
a streamlined workforce. What about salary? Kagina, you here has been getting 35 million shillings, but the, the commissioner or the permanent secretary or the minister, the lady minister Zeno Katumba Omara, may not even be getting that money. But the, the, the head of, of UNRWA is getting a lot of money. So all these, you have been accusing Museveni of, of, of you know, uh, being, I think, being, being what? Which term can I use? Extravagant. Uh, being extravagant. People are, people are determining their own salaries. Mm. Now, with, when you go back to the ministry, parliament and the public service are the ones not going to determine the salary. So you cannot Kagina pay yourself 35 million, yet a minister supervising you is getting 2 million. Museven does not get 35 million as a president, but an ED is getting that money. How? Because of this autonomous they had given themselves, that status. So they are trying to march. Then I think the other issue was, was, was about uh, um, the, 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 the reduction in terms of 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 workers and resources but also the close supervision by the mother ministry so all those combined i think it's a good thing anyway opposition has been saying museveni is duplicating roles and responsibilities now the very man who listened to them and now he's rolling he's unrolling them back to the ministry they are now telling him, all others you can roll back, but leave Uganda Coffee Development Authority. Why? Because a section of people in Uganda called the Baganda mm -hmm. want it so. So do you think Museveni can agree with that? That he has taken his own milk industry back into the mother industry, mm -hmm. mother, mother ministry. And you, you are saying you leave coffee because it is ours. It is not yours. <laughs> I think so. Well, I think. well, Mr. Andrew, Uganda side would want to roll into mm. Kenya now. See what has been making news in Kenya. Mm. We've seen uh, President Ruto stuck with his own decisions. Mm. His deputy president was recently impeached. He appointed another one. Gachagua. Yeah, mm. he was impeached, then another one. But still, the other one cannot take his position because it, parliament doesn't allow it. They ran into court mm. and they are stuck. Don't you think... President William Ruto is stuck with his own decisions. What does that tell us as Africans? First of all, uh, the hustler, Ruto. Hmm. I don't know whether he's still a hustler. I don't know whether he's still a member of, of, of the hustlers group. Because Ruto won an election on, account, on an account of being a hustler. He, you are one of us. We, they believed that when he goes to power, those hustlers would have their own. That's like you see here people believe that when Bob Wendy becomes president, these ghetto youth will be in things. You never know things change. When he gets there, uh, the youth or the ghetto youth who believe that this would be ours, you reach there and things change. So Ruto is exactly playing that card. Number one, all the campaigns that Ruto did was with Gachagua. And the, in, you, in, in Kenya, you campaign with your deputy. He's also elected alongside you, not like in Uganda where uh, the president appoints. In Kenya, they, 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 they go alongside in the campaign trail. Same, they copied the same style with America. They are, they are just copy and paste. Now, Ruto reaches in, 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 in power, he's now shedding off. He started shedding off his fellow hustlers. And Gachago is one of them. But Gachago is like a tick. He has stuck on Ruto's back. Everybody had thought that actually Ruto had won the battle. By going through parliament and impeach Gachagua. Gachagua has now returned in a very different style and is using the courts. Which courts Ruto is supposed to be presiding over, but they seem now to be actually, uh, I, not, I would, it would be a wrong word to say they are siding. I think they have seen uh, some, some value in the points that Gachagua is raising. That's why even when Ruto had succeeded in impeaching Gachagua, 
Ruto had succeeded in appointing another deputy, court has overturned all that. And as we speak, Ruto had actually succeeded in using security to withdraw uh, 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 security from Gatsagua. Court has ordered that security be given back to him, and it has been done. Court has ordered that the new appointment that Ruto has done and the impeachment, all of them should stop until they hear the case in court. And it has, it, and, and it is being done. Gatsago has gotten back all the, his privileges as a, as a deputy president, as we speak. Katase, of court. I think we need to appreciate the, the independence of the judiciary in Kenya. In Uganda, that wouldn't happen. That mm -hmm. President Museveni is on this side and the, and the, and the, and the uh, Chief Justice. Huh? Uh, Unidolu is deciding otherwise. That wouldn't happen. So in Kenya, we need to appreciate that. So that's what I can read in Kenya. So actually, when I, uh, what I see in Kenya is that it's not yet over. Till it's over. Ruto thought it had been done. It had been sealed. Mm. Things are unfolding, and you never know uh, what might come in the ruling. Because in, in Kenya, the judiciary is when anything can happen. Oh. Now, when they impose a deputy on you, uh, and, and, and he still has some time to go, finishing that, that term that Ruth is left with, with a deputy that you don't agree with, we are going back to Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto himself. The, the, you remember the, 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 the contradictions Uhuru had with his deputy, uh, William Ruto. Oh. It may be the same. William Ruto will go and, uh, through with his Gatsagua. That he will be there as a deputy and there is nothing you can do until you finish the what? The term. The term. And when the term ends, Gatsagua has already declared, I'm standing for presidency. Mm. This is exactly the same thing Ruto and, Willi, uh, and Uhuru Kenyatta went through. Mm. So we, we are seeing history <laughs> repeating, repeating itself. itself. That's what they can, they can read. Mr. Andrew, East Africa aside, now we are focusing on two U.S. elections which are just around the corner. Next Tuesday, U.S. is going into elections. Mr. Andrew, by the way, who do you support, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? I support uh, Trump. And why? Trump, the term Trump uh, had last time as president, I saw, I saw the, the real image of America, the true America. America has for decades been hoodwinking the world that we are this actually when they are the opposite. That we are peacemakers when actually they are uh, warmongers. Trump brought out that picture very well. That for him, these things of America telling the world that we are peacemakers and you have a, a, a Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Trump is a man who will tell you the truth. But also, I wanted to realize that during Trump's time, he actually managed to maneuver through the, the, the countries that were at war and he, he, he made sure that he neutralized them. Trump made, with, made, made peace with, the, with China. Trump made peace with the North Korea. Trump made peace with, the, with Russia. This contestation between Russia and Ukraine has not just emerged during Biden's time. It was there even during Trump, uh, uh, Trump's time. And it has been a long-standing uh, disagreement. Uh, North Korea and, and South Korea, China, Iran, uh, uh, Israel, Israel, Palestine, mm. all these conflicts have been there. Trump had made, had found a middle ground, had found a middle ground to be neutral in order to look like a real peacemaker. And when he disagreed with you, he would show you that I disagree with you here. Now, this Biden, you are seeing a Biden in the front, but in the back, there is an Obama. Now, remember, this Obama is the very man who killed Gaddafi in Libya. Obama. He killed Gaddafi, then he came to Kenya, Kogere, they gave him a red carpet. The same Obama, his, 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 his mindset, I see it in Biden. Remember Biden? has been suffering from an ailment. Uh, Biden is not well. Uh, uh, so I think Obama and Kamala Harris have been taking advantage of Biden, Biden's what? Ill health. So most of these decisions you see that Biden has been taking against Palestine, 
uh, in 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 in, uh, in Russia with Ukraine. I read Obama. I see Obama. That's why you see. Right now, it is Obama who is the main campaigner for Kamala Harris, because Kamala Harris and Obama have been using the weaknesses of of, of Biden to implement the agendas of the in the world. So why I like Trump is that they cannot manipulate him. Trump, they cannot manipulate him, and Trump lives a clear lifestyle. He tells you this is like this. He does not change his word. Trump has a business mindset because he's a businessman. He's one of the richest men in the world. Biden is not. Trump knows the cost of a war when it comes to business. Trump knows. Biden doesn't know. Obama is not a businessman. He's a lawyer. <laughs> For him, that is life. But Trump is naturally a business. He understands. And he knows the language of negotiation, win and win. I mean win-win situation, you know, win-win situation. Trump knows it because he has grown in it, that is him, he's a businessman. He knows that for a business to thrive, we must have a win-win situation for us to trade uh, properly. Obama, it is, it, 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 it is either you lose it or you win it. So it's, it's more of the same like in Ugandan politics that the winner takes it all. Mm. That percentage of people in disagreement with you, like you have seen in Kenya, mm. that's why Ruto is facing, because Ruto and, and, and Ray Odinga, the difference was very minimal. In fact, some still believe that Ray Odinga won. Yeah. Now, and William Ruto also he knows it, he knows the truth inside him that I had a very big challenge. So, most likely, half of the population do not support you. So, he knows it. So, it means that when you're going to be president, you must avoid the issues to do with a winner takes it all. You must be somebody who sits in the middle and looks on both sides for you to be able to manage the country properly. But once you say, I want and therefore I want this, the other people also have a majority. They have people. So, it is the same thing that, that Obama and Biden and Harris have been implementing in managing the world affairs, the geopolitics of the world. Biden, I mean Trump, was different. Trump, that's why you'd see him taking a flight, Air Force One, to go to China and speak to the Chinese president, Jinping. He takes a flight, Air Force One. He goes to North Korea. You know? Mm. He takes a flight, he goes to Russia. He speaks, and he speaks a language of a win-win situation. Obama, Biden, Kamara Harris speak a language of I will clear you. That's what they are doing in, in Palestine. Cleansing an ethnic group, the Palestinians. Biden is supporting Israelis to clear, cleanse an ethnic group. Behind there is an Obama supporting. So that is, that is the real Obama. Remember, I've told you that Biden has been having a problem. First of all, he's, he's, he's old enough. He's very old. But also he has a problem mentally. He suffers from, from, from that, that disease. I, I don't want to go so much personal on his personal health. But he has that problem. So Obama knows it very well. Being a lawyer, very smart. And Kamala Harris, now that she's a woman, who also wants to make history. I have ever been president of America. Uh, I think the first um, um, uh, Indian American to be president of America, she wants that, that legacy at whatever cost. So she will do whatever Obama is advising at, at whatever cost. But meanwhile, that's why you see, when Harris Kamala had just been announced to take over from Biden, you realize that she, her rankings went how, so high. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we had started thinking that uh, Trump is finished, but now with the time, with the with with the, the the terrain that she has been engaged in, with the words, with the networks, mm. you have seen that Trump again has been eating in her percentage. In, in her percentage role. And now, as we speak, they are tied. at par. They have tied. Mm. Why? When you are given platform to speak and to do things. Mm. 
What you have been doing behind normally comes onto the floor and people are able to judge you. I think that's what is happening. So, to come to the next week, we may see a Trump back here. Like there was an Obote one and Obote two in Uganda. <laughs> we may see a, uh, a Trump return. Uh, we may see a Trump return like it is in Russia that, uh, that uh, this, uh, this man, my friend, Putin, went, he came, he left, he went and he came back. Trump might be returning to American White House. Well, Mr. Andrew, in an African perspective, how do you think these two candidates' foreign policies might impact <coughs> Africa? I, I believe economy? that Africa is much safer in the hands of Trump, just like it was. When you compare Obama, Biden now with Harris, when you compare the term, Obama here was, was enforcing LGBTQ and other issues on Africa. Eh? He was uh, threatening to cut aid because of our stance against LGBTQ. Uh, Biden has done it. Obama threatening, he cut some, like, uh, like uh, ago and so on. Biden has done, the, uh, has done even much worse. Was, but uh, Trump at that time did not act so much that way. So I see a, a, a safer uh, Africa with Trump at the helm of the White House. So if you asked me whom do you support, I started by saying my candidate is Donald Trump. Because he leaves his, his pure heart inside, you see it out. What he thinks about you inside is what he tells you. Obama believes that you should die today, but he will, he will even pretend to be bringing you medicine. Obama. He believes that you must die today, but you see him bring you medicine in the hospital. Yet actually he's bringing you poison. So uh, uh, a, a, Trump brought out, a Trump leadership brought out the true America that the world has actually missed to see for decades. Uh, whoever the winner among mm. these two might be. How do you think the U.S. administration is going to address Africa amid its growing influence from Russia and China? Well, it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, a matter of who trades with me better. <clears throat> like I have told you, Africa has and should have the power to choose their allies in business and other ways. We no longer need a world where a Biden, Obama, or Harris stands in America and says, you must do this in Africa. So we want a freer Africa where when Trump, uh, Donald Trump comes, he will give his positives. He say, I want to do this. This is your take, this is my take. That is the world that we, we, we envisage to see in a Trump leadership. But not, not the things of, uh, of forcing or dictating for, 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 for Africa. So I see a freer Africa. Especially, I love Trump when it comes to issues to do with LGBTQ. Trump doesn't, doesn't really even believe in those groups. But Obama, Harris, Kamala, and Biden, they are the founders of those groups. Biden doesn't like them. So in a Biden leadership, I see that some of these issues, especially Uganda, got into with America, the, the sanction and so on, because of uh, the anti-homosexuality uh, law, might be revised. So there is uh, much more hope in a Trump leadership than it is for Harris Kamala. And, and, and because that is going to be a, a Harris Kamala leadership is an Obama leadership. That's Obama. It's a continuation of Obama. And lastly, Mr. Andrew, mm. what can Africa learn from U.S. electoral process? If at all there is anything we can learn from there. <laughs> now, when it comes to, to what we should learn in the elections, I think, I think they should learn from us. Oh. They should learn from us because America is so much uh, full of pretense. Mm. They show the world that they are, they are democratic, but they, actually they are not. When you see how they are manipulating the systems, when you see... The, the amount of money they inject in, in these elections. When you see the issues around, the, the, the arguments, what they call issues, around their, their, their electoral colleges, 
do you support LGBTQ? What are you going to do for us? Those are not issues for Africa. You find somebody is giving you a vote because you're going to facilitate and legitimize uh, issues that we Africa look at and say, what's wrong with these people? Those are the issues. There's nothing so much better. Thank they you. should be learning from us. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Indeed, the U.S. and the rest of the world should learn from Africa. It has been the Spy Weekly Roundup, Spy Television, Spy Uganda. See you next week.